Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. GM recently released the new specs for the 2020 Bolt EV. I'm going to put a link to the uh, press release in the information below, but I'm also going to put a link to a Push EVs article uh, with an interview with someone from LG Chem because I think it has some insight into what's actually happened and uh you know, what we can expect maybe from GM moving forward. First off, all right, the big news is the new Bolt EV is now uh, rated at 259 miles of EPA range, which is about 21 miles uh, increase. And of course, it's a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack now instead of the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in the previous versions of the Bolt EV. On the surface, that's just you know, basic numbers, people are saying it's not a significant change, but it's enough to keep it uh, competitive with things like the Hyundai Kona Electric or the Kia Niro EV. And, uh, you know, based on my interactions with those other vehicles, I, I think that's very valid. Uh, at this point, really, the choice between the 2020 Bolt EV and the Hyundai Kona Electric, it's no longer about the range anymore. It's really about whether you value driver assist functionality more or whether you uh, value cargo and passenger uh, space more. Because the Bolt EV does have more cargo area, more rear passenger room, while the Hyundai Kona uh, still has a superior driver assist functionality in that, well, it has driver assist functionality. So it really does create a, a closer gap between the two in terms of functionality. Uh, but I think there's some subtle things going on in the details of the 2020 Bolt EV that are being overlooked by a lot of people. Now, GM did say, yes, it's new battery chemistry. Really what they were referring to uh, more than likely was the cathode composition, which in the Bolt EV uh, currently, right, leading up to this, it was NMC uh, nickel manganese cobalt. 622 or six parts nickel two parts manganese two par parts cobalt and that was pretty much been the standard battery chemistry the same that you'll find in the hyundai kona electric the kia nero ev the the jaguar i-pace really nickel is what's giving you the energy uh, storage in your cathode and the manganese is really there to sort of support the structure and the cobalt will store energy as well but it's more expensive with sort of questionable uh supply chains so that's why people are pushing more toward the nickel cathode than the uh, uh cobalt in the cathode but a lot of people were talking about well they'll probably jump to the nmc 811 eight parts nickel uh one part of uh, the other two but you know it appears that there have been issues with that chemistry uh, the nickel isn't as stable, it's harder to manufacture. So almost everybody sort of abandoned any attempts to use that in their batteries uh, other than like commercial vehicles under control, controlled circumstances. Even the Kia Niro EV that was supposed to ship with 811 batteries didn't, right? In that interview that I referenced in the Push EVs with the uh, LG representative, they basically said that they didn't really have any plans for NMC 811 sells for uh, basically direct market retail vehicles. And the next step was actually going to be NMC 721, which is essentially nickel, uh, seven parts, two parts manganese, one part cobalt. And I actually think that's the battery chemistry that we're seeing in the Bolt EV uh, for 2020, uh, which represents a major step up in terms of energy density. And so really right now, the current Bolt EV uh, at a pack level has an energy density of about 137 watt hours per kilogram. And this new Bolt EV, uh, the 2020, because they've also reduced the weight of the battery pack by 13 pounds while increasing the capacity by uh, six kilowatt hours, it means that the new battery pack in the uh, 2020 Bolt EV has an energy density at a pack level of 153 watt hours per kilogram. And to put that into perspective, Tesla's Model 3 2170 cells, the best of the best, right, uh, have a energy capacity at a pack level of 156 watt hours per kilogram. So essentially, 
uh, the new Bolt EV's battery in terms of energy density is on par with Tesla's 2170 cells. That's impressive enough on its own. Now, one thing that people keep saying, though, is they think, well, this still doesn't address the big problem issue with uh, the Bolt EV, and that's the charging rate. Well, we don't know, right? Uh, the press release has the same basic 90 miles in 30 minutes. That's not really based on the car. I think automakers like Nissan and GM are doing that based on the charging infrastructure because that's the rate that you can expect on a 45 kilowatt charger, which are still the most prevalent public chargers. You see significantly faster rates than that on 150, 200 amp or faster uh, DC chargers. So I think that that was just not even a technical oversight. I think it was simply just lazy editing. And uh, so I think we might be able to expect at a very basic level, even if they kept all things the same, it would be a 66 kilowatt uh, charging rate, which is a little bit better. But I have no reason to think that that's what's going to happen with a new chemistry, knowing that there are faster chargers on the horizon. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see GM, if the cells are rated for it, push the charging rate up to as much as a 1.5 C or a 2 C charging rate, which means we could see between 100 to 125 kilowatt charging rate, which would put it again on par with the Tesla Model 3 SR Plus. So essentially what you're doing is not only is GM leapfrogging all of the other competitors in terms of the value brand, they could essentially be matching Tesla in terms of functionality while doing that. So I think this is a really big leap forward, but we also have to understand that I think this is just an interim step. They're also doing a mid-model refresh in 2021 where they're actually going to update some of the interior materials. So uh, I, I see this as sort of an interim solution, and I don't think that this NMC721 battery is their uh, final end game, right? This isn't the 300-mile battery that GM was referring to, like in Mary Barra's uh, presentation to Barclays. So I think we should also just stay tuned, but uh, I'm really waiting to see what the charging rate is on the Bolt EV, because if they can match something like the Tesla Model 3 SR Plus's peak rate of 100 kilowatts and maintain that to 55 or 60% battery, you're talking about something that literally just leapfrogged all of the rest of the competition. So I'm really impressed so far with what I've seen, but I really want to dive deeper into some of the numbers and see exactly what this new Bolt EV is capable of. Uh, let me know what you think. What have you found out about the Bolt EV? What are you curious to find out about? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And thank you for watching.